Todd Walsh back here at Jobby.com Arena. We're just moments away now from the drop of the puck, the Coyotes and the Canucks, but time for a Geico quote of the game. It's from Coyotes general manager Don Maloney, who met the press at about 6.15 here today and gave us his take on the newest Coyote just acquired, Martin E. Rath. Really touches a lot of the game. Um, and so, again, he just sort of fits with who we are. You know, he's no, not a dynamic, obviously high-end, pure skill player. But he fits into who we are, and we just hope it just we can we hit the right note, and he regains a little offensive confidence. They've done it so many times before. Don Maloney, we will hear from him live in the first intermission up in the broadcast booth tonight. But first things first, Matt and Tyson, take it away. The drop of the puck, it's yours. All right, thanks a lot, Todd. Let's take a look at the goaltenders tonight. Mike Smith goes for the Coyotes, 20-18-10 and 10 with the goals against of 278. And now that Roberto Luongo is Miami bound, it'll be Eddie Lack, 9-9-4 for the Canucks, 2.09 goals against average. Referees tonight, Don Van Massenhoven and Kevin Pollock and the linesman Lonnie Cameron and Jay Shares. What a day it's been around the NHL. And, oh, by the way, Tyson, there's a hockey game. Oh, really? And a big one at that. Talk about this battle we have on our hands. Two struggling hockey clubs. The Coyotes have lost four in a row, and the Vancouver Canucks have lost 10 of their last 11. So we're underway as David Schlemko will play it over to Michael Stone, and the Coyotes will dump this one into the Vancouver zone. Tanev goes after it, so does Jeff Halpern. He'll get deep on the forecheck as it's a play it around. Big hit on Hamus and a good keep of the line there by Moss. And we'll get a whistle here as we take a look at Tyson's key to the game. It's brought to you by Sanderson Ford. One key, that is it. The wheels fell off the other night in what was really the best 40 minutes that the Coyotes played all season long against the St. Louis Blues. They forgot to show up in the third period. It came back to bite them. That cannot happen here in this hockey game. The biggest game of the year right here. Yeah, Blues head coach Ken Hitchcock said it was one of the best performances he had seen by an opponent in all of his time coaching. And it was those first two periods you were alluding to as Edler will keep it in and he sends it in behind the net. Henrik Sedin, one of the two Sedins in there. Daniel is out tonight for the Vancouver Canucks as Edler will try to bring it back to the line. And here's a shot that's steered away by Mike Smith. And we'll get a face-off uh, coming up. Dave Tippett, he talked the other night about how they talked as a group about pushing it after being up 2-0, hoping for a better result here tonight against Vancouver. And John Tortorella, 438 wins. And the Vancouver coach is number one among U.S.-born coaches in terms of wins. He's a native of Boston. Well, I'm sure both those coaches have their hockey clubs fired up for this one. Actually, I'm not sure with the veteran leadership in both locker rooms that you really even need to say a word about how big this game is. Tanev has it. He'll set it up. And now Ribeiro will take it away. Redeem Verbato will bring it along. Gets it to the line that time intended for Derek Morris. This is broken up and played all the way back in over the line and over the glass and out of play. When we talked about the standings. The Dallas Stars now have made that game 3-2. to two. With 14 or 13 minutes left in that game, there's going to be some scoreboard watching here tonight. The Columbus lose. leading in that game. Yeah, the Coyotes lose this one. In fact, if Dallas takes over, they'll be five points back. They win, well, they're just one point back. So they have to find a way to get the job done here tonight. The proverbial four-point swing. There's about a little under 13 minutes remaining in that game in Columbus. And as you mentioned, uh, the Blue Jackets leading that game 3-2 to two after having a 3 to nothing lead. Puck will be played in. Into the corner now, Keith Yandel. will send it around. And in behind the net for Derek Morris. Play back to center ice. And now uh, Schrader can't handle it. Stanton will play it across, and the Canucks will bring it out. Ryan Stanton. This one's picked away by Klinkhander. And he'll play it in behind the net. Stanton has it. Archibald, and out of the zone back to center ice. Paul Bissonette tonight playing with Kyle Chipchura and Rob Klinkhammer. Yeah, the first goal in that game the other night against the St. Louis Blues really got the, the Coyotes rolling as this one deflects over the glass and out of play. I mentioned one of the two Sedins in the lineup, a Daniel injured in the Heritage Classic over the weekend on that play right there, hit by Ottawa's Mark Mathot. 
Yeah, uh, that's happened in DC place too. So you get hurt and you gotta feels like probably half a mile back to the locker room. And the Vancouver Canucks talk about struggles. The trade here today with Lawongo, I mean there is some controversy. There's a black cloud over this organization right now. We talked about it, lost ten of their last eleven games. You lose Daniel Sedin. We got Kessler being traded, not being traded. Did he ask for a trade? It's a struggle. All sorts of things going on in BC these days. As Moss will bring it on over the line, drops it, helper, and glove save. Eddie Lack. Well, the Coyotes get their first chance of a hockey game. While we talked to the coaching staff this morning of the Coyotes, what they liked about their game the other night against the Blues, they were good in their defensive zone. They waited. There was no hesitation. Get that puck up the ice, north south game. Created a lot of scoring opportunities, and again here, the best chance so far of this hockey game. Great shot there by Helper. So the face off to the left of Black. Moss out there with McMillan, who's back in the lineup. Jeff Halpern centering those two players. And it'll be taken away and out of the zone for Alex Burroughs. Amuse now. He'll send one in behind the net. Mike Smith goes to play it. And this one will be played out by Brandon McMillan. About this time last year, McMillan came over to the Coyotes from the Anaheim Ducks. Played in both games on the road trip, but was lauded by head coach Dave Tippett. Was a healthy scratch Sunday against the Blues. That's I, like him. Play. I really like him. The energy he brings, he can skate, he can get in on those loose pucks, and he's a player that when you give him the puck, the play doesn't die at his hands. He continues, he continues the cycle, and he makes plays. At the line for Bieksa. And behind the net going after at that time is Zivinik McCulloch. Wesler will turn it away. They get it to the front. Here's a chance. Oh, that might have hit McCulloch in front. A uh, big block there by McCulloch. I don't think Mike Smith knew where that puck was. That hits the net. That's a real good opportunity. And behind the net, Bieksa. And he'll look around for Vancouver. 1-8-1 in their last 10 as Edler will bring it back in over the line. His shot went wide. And Keith Yandel to play it in behind the net. Moves it all the way back to center. And now Bieksa paired with Alex Edler. And Bieksa brings it back through center ice. Nearly four minutes gone in the opening period. No score. Each team with a shot on goal here tonight in Glendale. Cassian drops it. Comes in front. Burroughs looking around. That's swatted at. And the Coyotes will turn the other way. And a quick up there by the Vancouver Canucks, taking a page out of the Coyotes book, getting behind the Phoenix Coyote forwards, led to that three on two. Garrison now back at center ice, getting it in deep as Higgins. And now Stone with it. Back through center, in over the line with speed. Kyle Chatura puts it on the brakes, backhand, Bissonette in front, and it stopped by Lack. And now Klinkhammer having words and Bissonette in there as well. And I think that's Archibald who was just recalled yesterday from Utica. Now stirring the pot. The Phoenix Coyotes, I like it. Getting in on this board check. The emotions are running high. And we're going to go back to that opportunity that we talked about. The block in front. This is Coyote hockey. Getting in those shooting lanes with the stick in the passing lanes. The big right foot of Zabinic McCulloch comes out and stops this pot by Edler. Otherwise, that's a real good opportunity with Burroughs in front. One last shot for Mike Smith to stop, Matt. Matt McCulloch has been terrific for those 120 blocks on the season. That's a lot of ice bags is what that is. Cool. I would say there are lots of players that haven't had 120 in their careers. Oh, I'm probably one of them. My sensitive feet. <laughs> Stino will dump one in. Schlemko. And he'll give it give way for Chip Chura, who moves it up the left wing side. Bit of a struggle for the Coyotes trying to get the puck up off the boards and out of the zone in that third period against St. Louis. They're able to do so on that last sequence, and now the Canucks will send right back in. Mike Smith had all sorts of trouble the other night against the Blues, playing that puck, working on that this morning, that pregame skate. And we also should mention Coyotes didn't skate yesterday. In front to Senwai. 
Hey, Tippett making sure energy is at a maximum here tonight. You're not going to learn anything more in practice. These guys know how to play. It's all about making sure you have the energy to go out and get the job done. And after a bad third period the other night against St. Louis, you, you would figure you just want to flush it and get it out of your mind. Is up into that time, Bissonette. And play rolls on. Yeah, that was a tough one to, to swallow, I, I can tell you that. And sometimes tough to get over as a player. But you're right. You, you want to flush that one right down the toilet. Dave Tibbet, a real master when it comes to uh, managing time and practice and knowing when to and when not to. And as you go further along in the season, teams typically practice less and less for all those reasons you, you just uh, gave. And Adler will keep this one inside the zone. And now Yannick Hansen. And it's taken away by Vermette Hill. Clear it to center, and here's Moss. Moss drops it. Vermette across. Puck for T1 up, and that one won. How about that puck movement there by the Coyotes? Zipping it around. And out of the zone goes Yannick Hansen. Over the line, drops Bieksa. Leaves there. Now Kessler. Try to get it in front. Where will he be come tomorrow? Will he still be a member of the Vancouver Canucks, or will he be off? Uh, to another destination. I uh, just read on good old Twitter that the Canucks asked him to waive his no trade clause for the New York Rangers, and he said no. That might tell you a thing or two about uh, a little, uh, maybe a, a coaching with, issue. Yeah, with Elaine Vigneault, who is the former coach and now uh, coaches in New York, as a shot by Eklund Larson is deflected over the glass. And out of play. Pretty good battle between Kevin B. Exxon and Shane Doan. Maybe a bit of a hold as well. Welcome back. Well, that is Pat Conacher Jr., who's the emergency backup due to the Roberto Luongo trade. And he's the son of a former Coyotes assistant coach, Pat Conacher, who was an assistant from 2001 and 04. His dad now the director of hockey personnel for the uh, Utica farm team for the Vancouver Canucks. So, so Roberto Luongo gets traded around 2 o'clock this afternoon. They needed a backup, right? So they go to Pat Conacher Jr., who I guess was here locally. I don't, I don't know if he lives here or not. NHL <laughs> debut. Yeah. <laughs> and swan song all, all at once. <laughs> well, we've seen a little bit of that as of late. Buffalo needed a backup when they traded Ryan Miller. And the same thing uh, happening in Anaheim one night. Uh, Buffalo using an equipment manager, I believe, uh, from the Anaheim Ducks. I once had our team mascot dress up as a backup goaltender. He actually ended up having to play in the game. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah, Crunchman in Syracuse. How was he? Oh, he was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Played all the way back. I'm sure you guys gave him a lot of support. Oh, yeah. yeah. Out of the zone, Hamus. Back it over the line, Darren Archibald, who just came up from Utica, sends one over the top, and this will roll all the way back. What a story, though. And Coyotes had a guy like that a few years ago. Tom Trenton as Donal bringing around, take it away. Schrader, and his shot deflects wide. Well, an opportunity for Zach Galpi, the former Carolina Hurricane. It'll be played out. A smart chip there by Mikel Dodker. Chip it in, get in on that floor check, and he gets in heavy and hard. Dalpy, and we get a whistle here and an offside. And, and speaking of Tom Fenton, we understand Todd Walsh has a little more. Yes, I'm um, his personal publicist, as you know, Tyson. And there he is at Madison Square Garden, December 16th, year of our Lord, 2010. Signed to that one-day contract. He is about 20th on the list. But he answered the phone, and that's how you become a backup goaltender in this league for one game. A cruel joke. Coyote veterans told me he had to leave his mask and helmet on during the game on the bench, but I, I chatted with Tom via text not too long ago, and he said, and I quote, the Coyotes are the Blackhawks, the only teams I'll suit up for now. So he's getting picky. <laughs> well, he's got a no-compete clause, right? <laughs> that's right. Uh, no trade. <laughs> Play it all the way back in, and after he's... Garrison in behind the net, Stanton going after it. Five players now in a battle with 11.08 remaining in the opening period. Not a lot of action, not a lot of chances at either end. Just two shots apiece for these two teams as we roll on here tonight. Stanton chases it down against Stephen Larson, ends up in behind the net. Stanton did a nice job there on the pinches. Garrison takes a shot and a stop there by goaltender Mike Smith. 
Well, Fox Sports Arizona has all your local sports coverage you can't find anywhere else with full coverage from tonight's game, including post-game reaction from the dressing room. Craig Morgan analyzes some of the trades that have gone down today. A phenom Archie Bradley has Electric Cactus League debut and much, much more on FoxSportsArizona.com. Yeah, and you, you saw Craig Morgan on Coyotes Live. Uh, get to FoxSportsArizona.com for all the latest. They'll have it. He's all over this trade deadline like a blanket. We'll also have general manager Don Maloney visiting us here in the booth between the first and second periods to uh, get a react on the big Martin Erat deal and whether or not something else is in the pipeline. Uh, for tomorrow, trade deadline is at 1 o'clock Phoenix time. And I don't know, you just got to think that maybe that second rounder is going somewhere. As this one is sent wide by Schlemko. The second rounder they picked up for David Rumbly. Uh, the biggest one for me is Martin Erat. They have been looking for Erat for a long, long time. Been looking for anyone, really, that can play on that left side with Martin Hansel and Redeem Verbata. They have not ever since replaced Ray Whitney since he left. But Amber Botta, 35 goal scorer. He has not been able to get there since the departure of Ray Whitney. Well, and that and that trade really is twofold. It's 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 Martin Erat being a guy that they can plug into their top six. But but the second side of that is what you just mentioned. Maybe he gets Verbata going. Maybe he gets Verbata going. And I guess the other thing is is he's a perfect fit. The chemistry. Chimchura shoots. Oh, what a pullback that time for a great look on Lack. And we'll get a face-off with a little bit of, of pushing and shoving and Chip Chura and Cassian in the middle. But great look here for number 24. No score tonight. Welcome back. Well, here's our edition of Nash or Nose tonight. Well, we talked about it. It's all about quick ups. Good defense leads to good offense. Get the puck and go. That north-south game that is so important for the Coyotes. Get that speed through the neutral zone, little chip and chase, and get in on the board check. That's the mother. Outstanding job there by Mikel Bodker. That's how this team, Matt, is going to have success. And you limit your turnovers that way. Puck possession game. I mean, you don't want to take all the creativity away from players. When the, when the play's there, when the gap is, is wide enough, that's when you take it. Schlemko gets it out. Brings it back through center ice, intended that time for the Korpikoski. Goes behind it at Verbata. And now Ribeiro, but it's knocked away and out of the zone to center. The Exa leading the Vancouver rush as he plays it into the corner. And now Ribeiro will get it out. He brings it all the way back to center. Edler. Now Bieksa for Vancouver as we close in on nine minutes remaining in the opening period. Up and Larson will clear to the corner. Six shots so far in this opening period tonight. And out of the zone for Brandon McMillan. He'll fire one in. Boss after it. McMillan that time deep on the four check. And played all the way back to center. And that's how you wear teams down. Again, you get that puck in deep. You just tenderize the meat, so to speak. That's where you create turnovers. You get the defense starting to look over their shoulder after they've taken three or four or five hits. Well, a little miscommunication there with Mike Smith and his defenseman. Nobody was taking that one. A good sequence moments ago, tenderizing that meat by Brandon McMillan. A couple of good hits deep in the Vancouver zone. Here's Vermette across Ekman Larson to the front. Don't is there, but he can't find the puck. Uh, too fancy. Got to shoot that puck. Bodker works it to the front. Vermette back out high. Stone has it. Broke his stick. Well, he had the lane, too. Keep an eye on Antoine Vermette tonight. Five goals in the season series against the Vancouver Canucks. Henrik Sedin tried to get into the front. That hit the outside of the net. And now Bobker. And Vermette will dump one all the way back in. We roll on. Seven and a half remaining in the opening period. Don't forget Don Maloney, the Coyotes general manager, our guest. Between the first and second periods of tonight's game. Talking about the E-Rat trade, talking about the trade deadline in general. Clink hammer. 
Well, Klinkhammer drops it out high. Piscinet with a chance, and he got it to the net before it's steered by Lack. Dalpy can't clear it. And now Keith Yano will bring it back and over the line into the corner. And Schrader will take it away. Jordan Schrader. Comes it right back in. Well, he was a real high prospect. First round pick of the Canucks. He's battled injuries through his career. Over the line it goes. Korpakoski on left wing. And now Burroughs with it. Back through center. Uh, good job there. A good read by Michael Stone. A yeah, good angle. Yeah, on Kessler just driving the middle of the ice. Stanton out high, shoots, and a save by Smith. And behind the net. And all the way back to center. Kessler bumped that time by Korpakoski, and it's sent right back in. A little hook, yeah, penalty coming up. Yep. Minor oh. penalty, delayed call against Vancouver. Now it's Burroughs. Just gets his stick in there on Michael Stone. Now we get a whistle here, and the hook is called. And the Coyotes will go to the power play. It happened deep inside the Coyotes zone. 14 day two. And advantage Phoenix when we return. Welcome back. Alex Burroughs in the penalty box for the Vancouver Canucks. He goes for hooking at 14.01. Well, the Coyotes have scored six power play goals in their last five games. Arizona Lottery Powerball Power Play. And a great chance here for the Coyotes who have five shots on goal so far, three of which have come off that fourth line. This is a played all the way down the lane. Yandel and Ekman Larson, the point men here on this power play. Bodker up front. Doan. And Vermette. Now Yandel. Back out high. Ekman Larson got one towards the net. Bounces in. And that makes the save. There it is. Win a faceoff. Move that puck around and get shots on lack. Knox penalty kill has not been good. Five goals allowed in their last seven games. We talked about it. The Coyotes. Relied heavily on their power play. They need a little bit more five on five, but they will gladly take a power play goal right here. The start, we talked to Steve Peters this morning. The start is going to be crucial. Two very fragile hockey clubs right here. The Exa, and he'll clear it past Yandel and down the length of the ice. Steve Peters, a big part of this coaching staff, does all the video breakdown. And we got our information this morning. Back to center ice, Yandel tries to get it back in over the line. This play goes offside as Dome touches, and so the faceoff comes out with a minute seven remaining in that Arizona Lottery Powerball power play. He's Yandel, one of the, the shooters, the Cliff Clavin, the guy that carries the mail up the ice. And Shane Doan has been the guy in front. No Martin Hansel here tonight, so that makes it all that much more important. They get Doan in front. Yep. Good point by you. I, I did. I failed to give the scratches. Martin Hansel and Chris Summers out of the lineup tonight for uh, Vancouver. No Yannick Weber, Daniel Sedin, who we've talked about, or Rafael Diaz, who was a defenseman acquired from Montreal a few weeks ago. This one goes right into the Canucks bench. So the faceoff comes out with 54 seconds remaining in the power play. And they need a little love from Mike Ribeiro. 41 points. He leads the Coyotes. In that category, only two points in his last six games, though. He criticized for taking a couple of bad penalties the last few. Dude, a, a lot of praise if he could put a few in tonight. Kobata, another guy that really needs to get going. Four goals over his last 24. Good key to the line, Yandel across. Ekman Larson sends one to the net and a stop there. Now Korpakoski just trying to take it towards the net. That's broken up. Hand use, and now finally it rolls to Eddie Lack, and he'll get a faceoff. Oh, nice play there by Ham use just to get that puck, calm things down. He slides it right back to Lack to get a faceoff and a whistle. 
He throws that out. He was in a real bad situation. He just gives it right back to the Coyotes. Real heads-up play there. Puts it back into the goaltender's pads. Lives the fight another day. And the Exa will clear this one all the way down. Verbata, Ribeiro, and Korpikoski, the power play unit right now. Randall and Ekman Larson has the point man. Deflected, so no as the play continues. Richardson. Now out of the zone, Richardson doing a pretty nice job, and he'll dump one all the way back down. He leads the Vancouver Canucks in short-handed goals with two. So one shot on goal for the Coyotes on that power play. Well, not a good power play for the Phoenix Coyotes. You want to build some momentum off that. Often you talk to guys who play on the power play. It's not always about scoring the goal. It's just about creating momentum and then coming out after and scoring, capitalizing on that. We saw that real early in the year for the Phoenix Coyotes. Cross over the line gives Halpern. McMillan behind the net. Brandon McMillan working hard along the boards against Higgins. Stays right with it. There's some of that tenacity you've been talking about. Stone gets one towards the net. That hit a skate in front. And cleared out, and Schlemko will reset for Michael Stone. And he'll send it back in. And good news tonight from the capital of Ohio, Columbus. And a shot! They score! And sixth against Vancouver and his 22nd of the season. Uh, nice job here by the Coyotes. They get in on the four check. McMillan gets in on it, throws a blind pass. I think he was trying to hit Antoine Vermette. Instead, it goes through everybody. Shane Doan comes in off the bench, and this puck just squeezes right through Lack and just hangs around in that blue paint, and Antoine Vermette, he's trying, he's trying, he's getting hooked and hold it, and he finally gets a stick on that puck to put it home. That's a huge goal for the Phoenix Coyotes. We talked about the start being critical, and Antoine Vermette gets his 22nd of the season. Huge goal late. Doan and McMillan assisting, and it comes at 17.04. And now Yandel with it. This, this goes to what you were talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, the team that gets the lead gets the momentum, and you know, neither team wants the other team who struggled to Get off the hook, so to speak. And the Coyotes have scored the first goal in a lot of games. They've blown leads five times in their last 11 games. They have the lead now. Now is when they need to come up with a couple real big shifts to finish this first period out. And it's Missinette to get it through center, and he'll chip it into the corner where Chip Chura goes after it. Now Kyle Chip Chura trying to work it back out high, and it bounced off a Canuck player, and it's all the way back to center ice. Great job by McMillan, though. Third assist. Gets in on that forecheck because of the speed. We talked about him already tonight. And so many times you talk about players taking advantage of their opportunity. Brandon McMillan is doing that. And right from the dump in. The simple play. Nothing fancy. Chip it in. And go get it. You have speed. The Coyotes get to this loose puck. Put it out front. And boom, it's in the back of the net. It is as simple as that. Nice job by Antoine Vermette to go to the front of the net. He goes to the front of the net, kids, if you're watching at home, and stops in front and gets rewarded. If he does a flyby there, he doesn't get to that puck. Coyotes have now scored the first goal of a game at home in 11 of the last 15 games here at Jobbing.com Arena. And that used to be lockdown for this Coyotes team. I mean, they get that first goal. It's Coyote hockey the rest of the way, and they just suffocate you to death. Garrison works it off that right point with a shot and a stop by Smith. Rolls to the front. Burroughs can't finish it. And now Kessler will feed it back to the line. Goes past Garrison. And all the way back. Hanson now. Over the line, Bieksa. And then Bieksa works it to the front. Ends up in behind the net. Burrows with a minute 10 remaining in the period. Now Kessler. Edler. The Exa will play it back in behind the net. 
Ekman Larson skates after it, so does Kessler. And Ekman Larson comes away with it less than a minute remaining in the opening period. And now Ekman Larson will play it right back in behind the net for Stone. Herbata. We'll send one in. 40 seconds to go. Don't forget Don Maloney live in the booth. Talking about the trades and tomorrow's NHL trade deadline in our first intermission. Another great trade by Don Maloney. Seems to pull the Jedi mind trick on a lot of GMs around the league. I love it. Absolutely love it. Just gave this Coyotes team exactly what they needed. Out high. Higgins shot blocked by Schlemko. Now Halpern's going to get one up ice on a backhander, and that'll roll all the way back with a wave off the icing, which is seven seconds remaining. The exit has set it up in behind the net and played all the way back, and that's going to do it for the first period. Coyotes with a one nothing lead. Coming up, Todd will chat with the goal scorer, Antoine Vermette. We'll have Don Maloney in the booth and stats and highlights here from Glendale. Solid. Simple, workmanlike attitude for the Phoenix Coyotes. They had the hard hats on. They punched the clock in that first period. Outstanding. Yeah, and Vermette got his 22nd at 17.04 from Doan and McMillan. They lead the Canucks 1-0. And Antoine Vermette, and a little bit later on, the general manager, Tom Miller. Welcome back, Coyotes with a 1-0 lead as we get set for the start of the second period here tonight at Jobbing.com Arena. Antoine Vermeck getting his 22nd late. Good news tonight from Columbus. The Dallas Stars fall to the Blue Jackets 4-2. We also understand the Islanders are winning in Winnipeg, and those are the updated stats. If the Coyotes can get two points out of this one here tonight, they would pull to within one from the Dallas Stars who hold down that eighth and final playoff spot. Wow, would that ever be huge? That's what it's all about, though. Dave Tippett, they're not watching the scoreboards in there. It's all about this game. Right now, they finished 20 minutes, and 20 minutes only. Our thanks to Coyotes General Manager Don Maloney for joining us uh, in between periods. As we get the face-off here for the second period between McMillan and Kessler, and the Canucks will the control before it's taken away by Moss. Now, I have to check my DVR at what the conversation was all about. I got kicked out of the booth. <laughs> Well, you could have hung around as we take a look at tonight's Taco Bell Twitter poll. Tomorrow's the deadline. Who will be the biggest name dealt by tomorrow's deadline that hasn't already been dealt? Marty Brodeur, maybe Kessler here with Vancouver, Ryan Callahan, maybe Matt Molson. Tweet the Atbox Sports Arizona account and use the corresponding Twitter hashtag. Lots of goalies changing uniforms here today. Just when you thought the goalie market was settling down, boom, all of a sudden Roberto Luongo gets, gets dealt. So now the speculation is, will Tim Thomas stay or leave Florida? Where will he go? Well, the big thing here in Vancouver, I'm sure they would have loved to get rid of Luongo a couple of years ago before they got rid of Schneider. Or Schneider so now right. they've got rid of two number one goaltenders and nothing against Eddie Lack. But... He's not a number one goaltender just yet. Well, Jacob Markstrom came over in that deal today. As this one comes to the front, Kessler tied up. Uh, but Markstrom and Lack have less than 60 games of NHL experience between them. After having Luongo and Schneider, to my point, that is yeah. just a, a huge downgrade. Bodker over the line, sets it up. Here's Vermette to the front. Shoot it. And now Ekman Larson with it behind the net for Bodker. At the line, Stone, he'll take a shot. That was deflected wide by Doan. Vermette really had the Canucks number here this year. Oh, does he ever. Six yeah. goals, including the one here tonight. Opportunity there, though, to, to shoot that puck. And the Coyotes just getting a little bit too cute. Keep it simple. You've got traffic in front. Don and Bodka are right there. Kept at the line. Stone, he'll take a shot. Stop that time. And cleared all the way back. And Ribeiro this time is offside. Well, you know, we were talking about the deals earlier today. I referenced Roberto Luongo. Traded with Stephen Anthony, a prospect of the Florida Panthers for... 
uh, Jacob Markstrom and Sean Mathias. Eddie Lack, uh, the number one now. And that had to happen. I mean, Lalonga, they, they wanted to get rid of that contract. That was the only reason they couldn't trade Lalonga is because he still has eight years left after this year. His contract's not up till 2022, and he's 34 years old. So good news moving forward for the Vancouver Canucks. But again, they would still have loved to have Schneider in that uniform. Turnover here. Here's an opportunity. Ham use, and that's broken up. And the Coyotes will bring it back. Maybe a three-on-one. Ribeiro over the line. He's got stone wide. Drops at that time. Korpikoski fans on it. Oh. And back the other way. It goes for Sestino. Look at Racing Yandel. back Yandel. And he broke up the play. Great, great hustle there by Keith Yandel. How about the wheels on Keith Yandel? Unlucky play there. Ribeiro sets up Korpikoski on a tee, and he fans on it. Booth lost it for Bottle, chip it out. But it goes all the way back. How did he catch a break there? I almost pulled a hamstring just watching Yandel race back. Yeah, that was hurt from up here. That was unlucky. It was Cecito. Over the line, Halpern tried to float one to the front, and Lack reaches out, and he'll get a face off. Although I'm not sure. There's not a guy Keith Yandel couldn't catch in this league. Here's the opportunity, the fan there. Good up by the Vancouver Canucks. Cecito the other way. Kind of caught flat-footed, but look at the speed of Keith Yandel. The crazy legs. Good speed. One of the best skating defensemen in the National Hockey League. Keith Yandel, five points in his last five games. Now has 40 points. One less than the team leader, Mike Ribeiro, as a defenseman. Daniel Sedin, and now he leaves for Ryan Stanton. Canucks will try to get it out on the left side as it's flipped back through center on right wing for Henrik Sedin. Moss along the boards. Blocked in a battle. Smart play, Halpern. He'll float one back inside the Vancouver zone. Back through center. Puck played in over the line. Goes in behind it at Ekman Larson. And now Doan will get it back through center ice. Drops it. Ekman Larson with a shot. Batted away. Bonker Rister. And that was blocked by Christopher Tana. Yeah, no Derek Morris on the bench for the Phoenix Coyotes. My trusty binoculars here. Well, he was nice. in, the, in the locker room. Hopefully he's all right. We have not heard if he will return or not return to the lineup. So now Yandel playing with a Michael Stone. Coyotes down to five. Defenseman Alex Edler. And now tipped in by the Exa where it's played by Yandel. Now this is going to try to get it out. Flinkhammer intercepts. Got a shot away. Plucked it off the stick that time of the exit. Almost five minutes gone here in the second period and a 1-0 Coyotes lead. And out of the zone it goes. Here's a chance for Romero. One-on-one. One -on -one. Flips it to the front. Ramon is there. The backhander is stopped by Lack. A little spin around. A pretty cute there by Mike Ribeiro. Didn't have the passing lane on his forehand, so he spins around. Unfortunately, Rabata, a right-handed shot, had to go to his backhand to pick it up. Rolling puck to the front, now clear to the corner. Ribeiro is there. Kopikoski digging as well to the line. Ekman Larson. Rister, glove save that time by Lack. I like it. We're going to face off. I like it. Everything to the front of the net. Here is the play. Ribeiro streaking. Little back at backhand spin Rama. and because as I mentioned Radim Burbata is a right-handed shot he had to go to his backhand to get the wood on it connects with that puck pretty good as well and that's your Schwartz Laser Ice Center view from the ice Black closes the five hole on Radim Burbata would they ever love to get Burbata going here shot is in who's puck out of the door, McMillan now will play it on the line. 
Coyote starting to bring heat. 7-0 in shots here in the second period. Played in behind the net. After it is McMillan right in the middle of it again. Wonder if it's the best start Brandon McMillan's had since being recalled. And a good battle there between Yandel and Booth. Off the end boards, Booth tried to jam it home. Good coverage by the Coyotes, but they flip to the line and Tannehill sent it across. Amuse with a shot rolls in. Gonna stop that time twice by Smith. Now Schrader. Lays it in behind the net. Brandon McMillan is there. He'll chip it off the boards, and he gets it out. Back to center ice for Dave Moss, and he'll dump one in. Probably the best shift of the night for the Vancouver Canucks. Finally, they get a little sustained pressure. Otherwise, it has been one and done, and the Coyotes will take it. Ekman Larson, rink wide for Met. To the line, McCulloch. Locked away that time by Archibald to the front. Rubin was there. He got tripped up. And no penalty call. Oh, again, just maybe a little bit too cute. Antoine Vermette wants to go for the deep. Let's take him down. Back to the line. That's broken up. Tanev has to wait. And he sends one right back in. McCollum. Out of there. Through center and Tanev for Doan. They'll chase it down against Tanner. And now Kessler will bring it back through center. Cassian over the line. Plays it in behind the net. Higgins leaves it there. They work it to the front. Nobody there. And it's taken away by Ekman Larson. Now this one into the Coyotes bench. Nearly picked off assistant coach Newell Brown. Oh, Antoine Vermette with a great look in front of Eddie Lang. Todd Walsh on the bench with Brandon McMillan. It looks like the puck is finding you and you're finding the game tonight. Is that accurate? Yeah, you know, I'm feeling good, uh, skating well, and uh, hopefully we can uh, help contribute another goal here. What was said about that first period and what you must do as the second period goes on? Just keep playing the same way for 60 minutes. You know, uh, we played really smart hockey for 20, and we just got to keep that up. Brandon, thanks. Thank you. Guys? All right. Coyotes with a 1-0 lead. Sounds like a good game plan for Brandon. Yeah, there you go. The exact same thing we've been talking about. Keep it simple. Pucks in deep. Get in on that four check. Tanev. That bounced off Bakker and played all the way back in. Stan will send one in. Oh. Pollock just took a huge hit from Cicito to make a play, though. For that over the line, Ekman Larson got one towards the net that goes wide. Back of the line, Schlemko. And now Bodker. Keep an eye on the McCulloch. And don't forget Derek Morris already down. Coyotes down to five defensemen. Tanev brings it over the line with a wrister. That's stopped by Mike Smith. Yeah, let's hope McCulloch is just a little bit winded on that bench. He's getting a little bit of, of pain after taking that Cicito hit. Things are starting to heat up a little bit. But Sabina McCulloch, he takes a big hit to make a play. And that's what his teammates will appreciate. You know it's coming. You just got to suck it up and take it. Take it like a man. And he did there, but made a real nice play to get that puck out of harm's way. So the faceoff will be to the left of goaltender Mike Smith. Edler at the line. Shot blocked away by Yandel. Cleared out of the zone back to center. 1-0 Coyotes on that. Antoine Vermette goal late in the first as this one goes over the glass and out of play. Well, nothing beats enjoying a cold Pepsi at a Coyotes game. And for only $99, you can get a Pepsi family pack. It includes four Coyotes tickets, hot dogs, and Pepsis. Offer valid on select Saturday games. Visit phoenixcoyotes.com for details. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Phoenix Coyotes, live for now. 
again, in case you're joining us late, Coyotes acquiring Mark Erat from the Washington Capitals, along with prospect John Mitchell, in exchange for Chris Brown, Rusty Klusla, and a fourth-round draft pick in 2015. Yeah, nobody on their roster. They're buyers. They also sent David Arunblad to Chicago. They saved on some contracts. Yeah. And I think some money overall. So what a trade all the way around. Don Maloney, great job. And Arunblad uh, brought back a second-round pick. Yeah, which... He also went with Matthew, uh, Matthew Brisebois, who was also playing with Portland, that was part of that deal as well. Which, to your point, that second-round pick, who knows what that's going to bring. If you go back to that Kyle Turris deal, they got a, a draft pick in that. A trade. Yeah, everyone thinks that trade was a bust, but in fact, you forget who they got, which is Antoine Vermette. Locked away that time by McCulloch. Yeah, they used that pick to get Vermette as this one is sent in. And now the Coyotes will get it out back through center. They take Antoine Vermette all day over Kyle Turris because of all the things that Antoine Vermette brings. He's a guy that makes you win. Plain and simple. Great guy in the room, too. One of the most likable guys. I mean, he's just, just fits. And, 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 and in Phoenix, it's, you know, it, we know that, Tyson. It's it's about the fit as much as anything, really. And that's why Erad is another one of those guys. Yeah, you could go out and get probably a lot more talented guy, but can he play in this system? Erad has done it for so many years in Nashville. You brought that up on Coyotes Live. I thought that was a great point. Thanks, partner. A guy used to a defensive system, but the, but the point, you know, here's the thing, he's played right wing a lot in his career up until this year. Is Booth now will try to get one to the front. And this one played away and out of the zone. So what do you do? Do you, do you move Redeem Vermont on the left side? Well, That's I think the big you, question. You try him out there. You definitely don't move Verbata anywhere. I think you, you try Erat on that left side. He's a left wing. He's got a, the left shot that plays on the right side, so hopefully he can make that adjustment. Offside go the Coyotes. 1-0 they lead it with 9.03 in the second. We think with uh, our Czech players and the Czech synergy, we have good luck with, uh, with the Czech players. Um, that Martin, we're excited to have him. And we're, you know, there's some question over the last uh, day or two based on our recent play. Are we sellers? Are we you know, going to get rid of people? Well... We still believe in this group. We'd like to add to this group. Uh, until we're out of the playoffs, we're going to continue to uh, see if we can get there. That should make for an interesting stretch drive over the last 19, 20 games. And again, the deadline is tomorrow, 1 o'clock, Phoenix time. Right, so we're going to whistle here. And an icing call. Well, for $99, you can get a Coors Light party pack that includes two beers, two lower-level tickets. When the Coyotes host the Canadians this Thursday at 7, get yours at phoenixcoyotes.com. You can also call 480-563-PUCK. Canadians picked up a defenseman today, Mike Weaver, going from Florida to Montreal. And the Canadians, we haven't seen him in this building in, I want to say, over two years. Set on. Don't. Black. Shane Doan's been all over it again. It's three games in a row. He had two goals the other night in Colorado. For his work in front of the net. Almost gets another one here. It's all about face-offs. And it's not about the centermen. The puck drops. The wingers, they got to converge. They got to help out in that circle and win and fight for that loose puck. 10-3, the shots for the Coyotes here in the second period. Now Vermette, Doan trying to go to the front. Vermette couldn't get him the puck. And out of the zone it goes. Slumko made a, a smart decision there, Tyson. He could have pinched, possibly keeping that puck in, but he, he got back. And as a result, no problem for the Coyotes getting back as Doan will bring it in. Well, that's a long shift for this line, too. Shane Doan didn't have anything left in the tank after Hamios blew a tire there on the blue line. Out of the zone through center, Kessler, one-on-one. -on -one. He shoots, oh. he rang one off the pipe. Oh, that's 
Music to a goaltender's ear right there. Wow. Beats Mike Smith clean. And just rips it. Ouch, that hurts the ears. Oh. I go through. I just went to the left of Slumko. I don't think Mike Smith ever saw this puck leave the stick of Kessler. He used David Slumko as a screen. Real heads up play there by number 17, looking for his 22nd goal of the season. Garrison plays it in behind the net. Ekman Larson will take it there. They try to feed it to the line. This one's going to be kicked away, and the Coyotes will bring it up the ice. What do you think? Uh, do you think Kessler gets dealt tomorrow? Wow. Well, it, it's tough. It does, from what I've heard, the asking price is just way too high right now. But you never know. Pittsburgh? I wouldn't have thought Luongo would have got traded. Not with that contract. Oh, so anything can happen. Wayne Gretzky gets traded. Anybody can get traded. Good point by you as we take a look at the cold hard facts tonight. They're brought to you by Frost Brood, Coors Light, Road Goal Differential. The Canucks have scored 23 less than they've given up on the road, which is third worst in the National Hockey League. Hard to believe the Wilder on that list. The Wilder well on their way to a playoff spot in the oh, Western yeah. Conference. They've won five straight. Kings, by the way, have won five straight. Yeah, they for a while just picked up Ilya Brzgalov as well. Set in. Stop that time. It's stopped by Mike Smith and out of the zone it goes for Korbikoski. Larry Korbikoski gets it down low for about a sharp angle. Bounces oh. right in front. As Sestito that time had Mike Ribeiro all tied up. Yeah, real nice job just throwing the puck at the net. Keep it simple. Throw it at the net. There was a body in front, almost went off him and into the back of the net. Good job here. Karpakoski backs everyone off with speed, puts it down low to Verbata, and just throws it right at the pads. At number 29, right, forward, high right, at the, yeah, right at the pads, and Mike Ribeiro, it almost goes off of him. And then, not only that, he draws a penalty off of it. There's the penalty. Lucido in the box, and the Coyotes already up 1-0. They have an opportunity to go back on the power play. 0-for-1 with a couple of shots. Second Arizona lottery powerball power play of the night for the Coyotes as this one is sent all the way down. Canucks take a lot of penalties. They are second in terms of most of penalties in the National Hockey League. Uh, it comes back to bite you. The Canucks have lost 10 of their last 11 games. The wheels have completely fallen off here in Vancouver. Played around. Yandel. Sent to the front. But they're still there. Coyotes have lost four straight. They're still there. That's the crazy thing about it. 20 games to go after this one for the Coyotes. Yandel out with it. Trying to get it to Korpikoski. Icing, though, of the call. Well, it's been an interesting season for John Tortorella. He was criticized for starting Eddie Lack in the Heritage Classic, but hey, look at the numbers prior to that for Roberto Luongo. They weren't anything great. And uh, now Luongo is on his way to Florida. Lack is the man. Jacob Markstrom, though, that they got from Florida has been a, a real good prospect in the American League. Now he finally gets his opportunity to either sink or swim at this level. Well, and we're going to find out what you have, and then you reassess it in the summertime. I mean, that's, that's the big thing. Sir Vancouver can probably almost guarantee that they'll be in the market for a goaltender. And they haven't been for a long, long time. To the front. Rivero can't put a pass line. Yandel out high. Power play with 45 to go. Rivero to Yandel. He shoots right over the pipe. top of the net. That might have gone off the, the post. Ramada. Well, he rode one up high. Eklund Larson. Lots of attempts here for the Coyotes, but they have yet to report a shot on goal. Yandel to the corner. Romero out high. Eklund Larson. That's blocked by Burroughs. And the Anna Cancel will start at that. All right in the huff of Burroughs. He didn't even know. He didn't even want to block that shot. He was just, I think his back was to the play. Good puck movement, though, by the Coyotes. Good outlet by Yandel to center for Mike Romero. 
He gets one in over the line. Across now. Stone open. He shoots. Glove save. Eddie Lack. And the penalty is over. So the Coyotes get good movement. And we can tell you, too, in Winnipeg, the Islanders and Jets are now tied. And don't forget, just a reminder, when the Coyotes win, you win at Papa John's. The day after every Coyotes win, celebrate with 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com by typing in promo code Coyotes. Offer only available on regular menu prices. Our century link link to what's next. The Coyotes wrap up this three-game homestand. I don't think UP will be in the building, but the Canadians will. Pre-game show our coverage Thursday night beginning at 6.30. And if there are any more deals to talk about, I'm sure we'll be doing that on uh, Coyotes Live. Meanwhile, just uh, moments ago, Keith Yandel right off the post. You called it, Tyson. Yeah. Eagle beak, eagle eye, bud. A shot there by Keith Yandel. I, I like the mentality, though, the approach to that power of play. Just like this game here tonight. Keep it simple. Puck some people to the net. McCulloch tied up in behind the net booth. Bumped off the puck there by Halpern. And McMillan will bring it along back through center for Moss. Garrison. Now McMillan will play to the corner for Halpert. At the line, McCulloch. A redirect in front goes wide. And behind the net, McMillan leaves it there for Dave Moss. Eckham Larson steals it. Sends it to an open area into the far corner for Bodker. And then taken away, and the Canucks will look to set it up. Cassian. At the center, that got picked. Bodker, quick counter, two on one here. Late change for the Canucks. Gold, right to the net. He sent it over the top. Oh. What an opportunity that was. The Vancouver Canucks, how many odd man rushes have we seen in this second period? That was a bad line change, blown line change. Coyotes have got to make them pay. I think that's three. Shane Dome will not be happy with himself with that opportunity. Not even get a shot. Out high it goes, Stoney unloads with a shot that goes wide. Michael Stone's had at least five or six shot attempts here tonight. Uh, here's the turnover we talked about. Good gaps in the neutral zone. Back, they come the other way. And Shane Doan, he wanted to pass that puck. He wanted to, wanted to. And then when he finally elected to shoot it, just kind of ran out of real estate and tries to go up and over Locke's glove short side. Nothing there. And you hope all these opportunities do not come back to haunt them. At the line, Stone plays it in behind the net. All the way back through center ice, Dalpy gets it in. Archibald will chase it to the corner. Now Tanev. Taken away by Yandel. And he gets it right back through center and all the way down. Where we get an icing call here. Four shots. With three minutes to go in this second period for the Vancouver Canucks in this second period. Yeah, just 12 for the game. That tells you what the Coyotes' game plan has been. It's just that suffocating style again. Simple, almost like a simple road game. Giving them nothing. The Vancouver Canucks creating nothing so far. Just like the St. Louis Blues all the other night. Do not give them a thing, though. Stone chops at it. Klinkhammer brings it in. And a shot over the top of the net. And Schrader will get it out back to center ice. Edler has to retreat for Bieksa. Two and a half to go in the second. And Larson behind the net for Zabinik McCulloch. Played deep by Verbata. And cleared out of there by the Canucks. This will be an icing call as it crosses the line. Now uh, BXA just fires that down the ice. Vancouver playing and simple. They just can't handle the heat right now. Dave Tippett has to be happy with his hockey club, but you know he's thinking the same thing. we got to capitalize. 
They're giving it to us. They want us to take this game away. Well, Tippett said that the other night when it was 2 nothing. He said, you know, we talked about pushing it. And uh, I'm sure they're trying to push it right now. Barrow will take the draw against Schrader. Very little signs of life here out of this Canucks team, but they can catch fire in a hurry. Offense has been their story. That's been a big reason that they have struggled so bad. I think the Bo Sedin twins have only accounted for one point in the last 17 games that they played. Daniel's not playing tonight, but these guys are, both of them, are over a point a game over their career. Yeah, that's no just, goals in the calendar year of 2014, if you can believe that. That's, that's incredible. I don't feel so bad about my slump now. <laughs> I mentioned the numbers of Roberto Luongo uh, when referencing the Heritage Classic. And, and part of that, too, is the injuries on, on the uh, blue line uh, throughout the year for the Vancouver Canucks. And hasn't had a lot of support. It's been part of his fault, I guess. And it doesn't matter anymore. He's He's gone to Florida, and they don't, they don't have to worry about any of that. As Romero get it back to center, and now in over the line for Ekman Larson. He drops it, and a shot taken that time blocked away. In over the line, Hanson to Higgins. He's up in behind the net. And the Coyotes will get it out as it's pushed all the way up, and they wave off the icing as Garrison back to get it. Last minute Under a minute to go, David Booth trying to go wide. Booth that time, running right into Mike Smith. Locked away, and the Coyotes will get it out all the way back to center. Yannick Hansen. Now the exit. Got it to the front right there. Swat away at it was Henrik Sedin. No stick from McCulloch either. Back out high, and that's broken up. Oh, what a play there by Redeem Verbata. Unfortunately, that should be a two-on-one right now. Oh, he got a stick. Yeah, got it right off the, the bench. Here's a chance. And that makes the save. Oh, 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 what a play. Who gave him that stick on the bench? That is unbelievable. He loses his stick. He gives it to McCulloch. So McCulloch has a stick. He goes up the ice with no stick. Two-on-one, he goes to the bench. Is that Stan Wilson, the trainer? Gets it. And almost buries it. How sweet would that have been? It's like the baton relay. This is how on the ball these trainers are. I think that's his own stick, too. Might have been Bissonette who handed it. Uh, that is incredible. That's a, a bench that is on their toes. Ten seconds to go in the period. Canucks will get it out. They get it through center. Cassian's going to chase one down. And well, Yandel in the corner with just a couple of seconds to go. Good battle there. And the second period has come to an end. That play right there by Keith Yandel just epitomized what that whole second period was all about. Board battles. They won them. Well, coming up, Todd, with a Redeem Verbata, Craig Morgan chats with a Jody Jackson. And we have stats and highlights. Through two tonight, 22 shots for the Coyotes. They've limited Vancouver to 12. And they have a 1-0 lead on the goal by Antoine Vermet late in the opening period. Stick around, Todd, with Redeem when we return to Jobbing.com Arena. Welcome back, one nothing Coyotes as we get set for the, the third period of play. Lone goal in this one from Antoine Vermette. 17-04 the first period. So Let them hang around. Yeah. yeah, and so the big question, can the Coyotes close it out? We talked a lot about that. You, you know they have all year long. They've had this same issue. A clean win there for <laughs> Jeff Halpern is 
There's a Hansen. Never even put a stick down. Well, this is taking way too long, and we get the whistle, or the drop of the puck, I should say. Back through center ice after it is Moss. Brings it in. Moss trying to get it to the front. Jamming it right there, and two Canucks go colliding in the crease. Oh, I like that. Display. Yeah, I like that. Crash in the net, throwing it right there into the blue paint. Lock pays the price. And we mentioned no Derek Morris, and here is the play. In the first period, he takes a high stick from Richardson up high. Goes right to the bench and to the locker room and does not come back. Let's hope Derek Morris is okay. He is one tough guy. So to not see him on the bench, that's a little bit concerning. Any sort of cut, he'd be back. So scary, those sticks. You take very many? Uh, look at huh? his face. <laughs> Does that answer your question? McMillan. Into the corner, Moss. Back of the line, Ekman Larson. Sends it in behind the net. Now Moss. Let's pop free and Burroughs will look to move it along and he clears it all the way back. Pollock now in behind the net. Tries to go up on the right wing. Moss has it. Ring wide now for Matt. Good play by BX to break that up for Vancouver. And Edler will play it along for Booth. Broken. By Bodker that time, but the Canucks will get it all the way back in. D.T. Andel. And Vermeck gets it in over the line. I think Doan might have been a little bit ahead of the play, so we get an offside there. And just the smart plays. And... Everything we've talked about all game long, keeping it simple, getting pucks out, getting pucks in. That's all been just regurgitated in between periods. I can guarantee you from the coaching staff, from the leadership in that locker room. One thing to make the mistakes they did the other night against the St. Louis Blues, but you have to learn from them. That's the biggest thing. That's a team that grows. Right around the angle. Gets support from Romero. Goes behind the net, though. Higgins. They try to get it short side. Well, Kessler cut off. And Korpikoski on the regroup. All over him, though. Two cutups, including Kessler. And now Romero moving along. Rabada. Got some help there from Stone. Cutups bringing some heat here. Rabada can't get it out. Free. Comes in front. Oh, and that went over the stick of Tanev. Coyote's going to break there. Oh, oh. Ribeiro is looking to hit for Dean Verbata. He hits him. He is gonzo. Well, Saturday, the Coyotes and Blue Moon will host a viewing party at Nate's third base in Chandler. You and I will be in Washington. Coyotes playing the Capitals at five. Fans can win prizes, meet Holler and the Paw Patrol and enjoy food and drink specials. First of two East Coast swings for the Coyotes late here in the season. Bit odd in terms of the scheduling. You usually have those trips over a little bit earlier. Maybe one late, but the two is really almost unprecedented. Coyotes will be in Washington and then on to Tampa, Florida, and Boston. Chichero leaves it there. Bissonette tries to poke it along, and Sestito will take it away. He's acquiring Martin Erad. We assume he'll be in the lineup Thursday when Montreal's here. And then right back to Washington for Martin Erad. It's funny how yeah. that happens in a lot of trades. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, Erad hopes to be here by 10.30 tomorrow morning. Just in time for, for practice. Get the legs rolling. Get ready for that montreal Canadian game. What a game that's going to be, too. P.K. Subban here. Terry Price. Yeah. Likely a matchup between uh, Team Canada goaltenders from Olympic gold. Yeah, we thought that was going to happen tonight with Luongo. Apparently not. That you remind me about on a regular basis? Yeah. Times two. <laughs> I forgot to throw that in there. Yeah, good point by you. I'll be quiet as we get a whistle here. And the women's, but I won't talk about that. Yeah, well. 
Uh, times three. Times four, actually. But <laughs> who's counting? No. Yeah, just clog it up. That neutral zone. You know, we don't talk a lot about the neutral zone game and how important it is, but it's a good majority of where you spend the time. You control the neutral zone in the middle of the ice. You really control the hockey game. Don't allow Vancouver to create any speed when they do get through the neutral zone. Because they don't have that speed, they have to dump it in. Tanev in behind the net. Cleared out, McCulloch. Tries to move it along, Booth intercepts, and he'll dump it right back in, Schlemko now. Maldon racing after it against Tanev. And Booth now will get it back to center ice, Schlemko. And Zabinik McCulloch out of the zone, back to center dome. Rink wide for Met. Shoots. Lack to save. 26 shot on goal here tonight for the Coyotes. Booth plays one in. Gamble into the corner. Let's it go. Allows Rivera to kind of clean it all up. Korpikoski. Good work along the boards there. Buck possession has been the other key in this hockey game. Coyotes have not taken a penalty yet tonight because. They've had the puck for the majority of the time. They haven't been chasing. They haven't put their, been putting their sticks where they don't belong. That's what happens when you chase the game and chase the puck. You're reaching. Hadn't even thought about that, but that's what I'm here for, partner. Appreciate that. <laughs> the Exa. And now Ekman Larson. On the line, Rivera. They say it was onside. Works it into the corner. McMillan's there. And McMillan. Lost in a battle. Take it away. Higgins skates it out. To Kessler. Over the line, Hanson, but an offside here against the Vancouver Canucks. Let's look at the Taco Bell Twitter results. Of the four, who's likely to be traded by tomorrow's deadline? 38% of you say Ryan Kessler. Could imagine some snowbirds watching tonight. A lot of people thought Marty Brodeur might end up in Minnesota, but that's not going to happen now that they've acquired Ilya Brzezgalov. Lots of bears in Minnesota. Vancouver without a shot on goal over the last 12-18. The other thing, too, on the trade from Buffalo, very quiet today. Schrader will play it in behind the net and out of the zone for Sestito. I expect a flurry still tomorrow. Edler stopped. Rebound. Smith got that one, too. A real nice job, though, after that first shot by Vancouver. You're, you're picking up bodies. You're picking up sticks. Not allowing a clean second opportunity. Nice job by Mike Smith taking away that lower part of the net. McCollin. Out of the zone to center for Dome. Bumped there with Hamus. Now back it over the line as Rometel played in behind the net. Dome goes after it. Kessler will take it away. Now turning with it to the Canucks, Hamus plays one deep in behind the net. Smith, he bounce there, but Zabetic McCulloch will take it away, and he brings it back to center. Comes all the way back in. Eddie Lack will steer it away. David Booth and out of the zone, back through center for Burroughs. In behind the net, Garrison. Oh, sent in. Tough save there, Smith. Now yeah, Booth right in front. Good reaction time there by Mike Smith. And behind the net, Schlemko wraps it around. Can't clear it. Garrison, good keep again. Henrik Sedin. Tied up by Schlemko. And back come the Coyotes. Two on two. Verbata and Ribeiro. Now Ribeiro across and Verbata with a shot over the top of the net. Oh, real nice sequence there. Well, chemistry between Ribeiro and 
Verbata tonight. I like it. Mike Ribeiro has not played with Redeem Verbata once this year to start a game. We're starting to see a little bit of chemistry here. They played together at times throughout a game, but never to start a game. McMillan will send one in. Alper behind the net. Stanton after it, so is Clint Cameron. Taken away, bouncing in front, and cleared by Garrison to center for Cassian. Reflected away by Smith. Back of the line, Adler. Oh, he's blocked away off the skid of Keith Yandel. And Halpern will get it right back to center ice. Over the line, Edler. Oh, good oh, what a job by Bodker. Look at the backside pressure there by Mikel Bodker. Good defense leads to what? Good offense. Here they go. Bodker in over the line. Spreads it. Now Bodker still with a puck. Into the corner. Vermet to the front. Slimko swat away at it. Yeah, sneaking down that back door. I like it. The Coyotes are still being aggressive. Dave Tippett talked about that the other day, too. The third period against the Blues. Coyotes all game long were on their toes. And then that third period, they started to sit back a bit. Out of the zone and all the way back, Tanev. They wave off the ice in here. Nine minutes gone, period three. one nothing Coyotes. Hamuse. Higgins now plays it into the corner. Up with Larson. All the way back. And now sent right back in. Smith kicks it. Hits the rebound as well. Tough play there for Mike Smith. 17 shot of the hockey game for the Vancouver Canucks. Meanwhile, it's Chip Chura for Ekman Larson with a shot. And a rebound just wide. And Larson will chase it down on the neutral zone. Archibald. Dalpy for Henrik Sedin. Oh, good hit there. Michael Stone has had a real nice game here tonight. Back out high, Stanton. For Garrison with a shot and the rebound sit wide. Back of the line, Stanton. And he shoots. That's blocked. Caught Michael Stone, I think, either in the hand or the wrist. Oh, took it right in the hand. That stings. What a play, though. It was a good shift there by the Canucks. Now he's get the change, and Moss will dump into the corner as McMillan goes after it. Moss, McMillan, and Halpern right now. And back to center ice, Kessler. Can't get a pass McCollum. Broken play here, so the Canucks bring it in. Hansen. Now Bieksa across and a shot blocked away that time by McMillan. That's going to leave a mark. And Hansen with a shot. And the Coyotes will turn the other way and get it out. As Halpern goes after it, and he'll dump one deep. What a shift there. First Michael Stone, then McMillan. That is Coyote hockey right there. The Vancouver Canucks, they have come alive here. Higgins. Excuse me, that was Yannick Hansen. Back of the line, Tanev. His shot blocked away. And the Coyotes will get it back through center. Look at that puck in deep there. Well, Dome that time, I think it was trying to lead one there for Vermette, who has it, and he circles at the Canucks blue line. Dome behind the net. All over Tanev, and it bounces right to Eddie Lack. Ends up in behind the net. Yandel lets one oh, off. Look at the bodies. Look at the bodies in front. And now behind the net again. It comes back in front. Bodker. Oh, he scores. Oh, boy. Oh, and Vermette is hot. Vermette is saying that he was tied up. And they say no goal. The referee was in perfect position to make this call, but is it the right call? Bodies were flying, Lack was on his back, doing a snow angel in the blue paint. There was five or six bodies right in the crease. When Mikel Bonker finally gets this puck, there's Vermeer hacking and whacking in front, he's cross-checked. There's a Vancouver Canuck 
on top of him. Nothing he can do to get up. Still. Still. That, that, that's a bad call. Here's a good look at it right here. You want to catch one for Matt. He's got a cross check. And Schrader has him. He's on top of him. He's in the chicken wing in the in the blue paint. He can't get up. He can't get up. And the puck goes in. We have no goal on the play as the Phoenix players in the crease, not allowing the goalie to play his position. Uh, the player was in the crease because he couldn't get up. Uh, tough call. 8-13 to go in the third. Canucks get a break. 1-0. Welcome back. Time now for tonight's Jeep game summary. One goal in the hockey game. It was Antoine Vermette getting it across that goal line. Back at 17-04. Over the opening period here tonight at Jobbing.com Arena. Redeem Verbata has had all sorts of chances here. And this was the play you were talking about, Tyson, how he got the stick from Paul Bissonnette off the bench and came and nearly had another. Another opportunity there. Good feed by Ribeiro. And he's our on-ice leader, brought to you by Mid-First Bank. Time on ice, 19 shifts and a couple of blocks. Meanwhile, Antoine Vermette, furious. Yeah, just take a look at Antoine Vermette. This isn't a great look at it, but he can't get up. And he is livid because he knows the reason he was in the crease was because there was two Vancouver Canucks at one point right on top of him. He was in the roast chicken. The full pretzel in the blue paint. Courtesy of Jordan Schrader. He's not the biggest guy in the world. Couldn't get up. Turnover here. Here's a chance. Bodker trying to walk at that time on Stan. And the puck into the bench. Well, let's take one more look at it. You look at the overhead. There's Antoine Vermet. Perfectly legal. Gets cross-checked behind. 45. Keep an eye on him. 45. Yeah, keep one. your eye right there. Right there. Just keep looking. Keep looking. He's going to try to get up right here. And, and he gets punched in the back of the head and held down again. Pucks in the net. <laughs> the hand comes across. Jordan Schrader's right hand. I mean, it was... It was late. That's why the Coyotes were so upset. Moss works into the front. Lack the save. They had McMillan cutting to the net, too. Shot goes wide. Stone now. Chips it into the corner. Smart play there. Has support in behind the net. And McMillan and Moss. Yeah, look at the work on the boards. This is where the game is won and lost. Oh, big hit from behind there. Ostrak and penalty coming up. Yeah, no call from the referee right beside it. That was Van Massenhoven who made the call. Vancouver number 23, minor penalty cross-checking. Called that from the neutral zone. Had a pretty good view of it as well. So the Coyotes have a disallowed goal now. An opportunity with Edler in the box. Box, excuse me to increase this lead, and this is so important. You cannot let the Vancouver Canucks hang around, and that's what the Coyotes have done all game long. Vancouver has come to life here in this third period. Arizona Lottery Powerball power play. Huge opportunity for the Coyotes, but it's going to be raced back to center by Tanev. In over the line, Kessler trying to drag it on Ekman Larson. Great breakup play there. Ekman Larson with the handle defensively up front, Ribeiro along with Korpakowski and Verbata for the power play unit. Sit in by Ekman Larson. Korpakowski. And now Ribeiro feeds Yandel. Wrist shot from the point. Never made it to the net. Ribeiro. Huge opportunity for the Coyotes. Ekman Larson skates in. He shoots. I think getting the blocker on that was lack. Yeah, this is really where they miss on this unit here, Martin Hansel. They don't have that front net presence. Lack's able to see that shot from Oliver Ekman Larson. Good puck movement, by the way. But you can see it because usually that's where big number 11 is standing. 
They don't have Hansel, but as soon as you say that, Shane Doan's group over the bench. Yeah, and that's why you have to have one on one unit and one on the other. And Shane Doan is that guy on this unit. Scored two goals the other night against the Avalanche in that exact spot. At the line, Ekman Larson. And now Bonker with it. Bonker looking around. Doan goes to the front. A chance off the inboards oh. and another chance for Meddy. Can't put her home. Two locks at it. And now in behind the net, Garrison. Tries to move it along to the near boards. Yannick yeah, Hansen's there. Vermette that time took a shot up high. And we'll get a whistle here. Now that, Boy, puck's gonna, that puck's going to stay inside too. So that's the good thing for the Coyotes. How about this effort? Bodker, the redirect by Vermette, and then little Superman there. Two whacks at it. For Antoine Vermette, he is getting dirty. They stay out for the faceoff with 58 seconds left of the Canucks penalty. Vermette going and Bodker. And this one's going to be moved out by Alex Burrows. Canucks wanted an interference call there. Yeah, Alex Burrows just skated right into Keith Yandel. Made it look pretty good. Done that a time or two. <laughs> Almost selling it. Yandel. Ekman Larson. Yandel. To Ekman Larson's side of the net. Couldn't corral that puck. It's played out. Yandel now back at center. Bonker it over the line. Plays it into the corner and now behind the net. Against two Canucks players. Now Bonker lost it. Hamus intercepts. But it's Rivero. He's got room. Rivero will he shoot? And Rivero, sharp angle, rolls in front. Now back out high, racing after it. Vancouver's gassed. Yeah. yeah, they're on it. They're on fumes right now. Yandel with a shot. It goes wide of the mark. And high off netting as the penalty has expired. Welcome back. Coyotes Hockey Tonight is presented by Yancey's Fancy. Coyotes here in the third trying to protect that one to nothing lead. Jody Jackson with you. We will be right here for our post-game show. Coyotes Live presented by CenturyLink. Join us at the conclusion of the game. And guys, the topic, of course, is finishing. Talking to Dave Tippett earlier today. So the most frustrating part of it is we've played pretty well in these games. So the Coyotes know the focus has to be on these last few minutes here in the third. And guys, let's hope that we're talking about a different type of game tonight on the postgame show. Well, we'll see. 5.14 to go. Third period. The Coyotes live coming up immediately following tonight's game. We'll be joining Jody Jackson on the set. Into the corner, we'll get post-game reaction. Todd Walsh working the locker room as this one is sent in and wide. All sorts of coverage here on the eve of the NHL trade deadline. As it's played into the corner, and now Moss looks to get it out. McMillan will ship it back to center and wisely get it deep. Short shifts at this point in the game with four and a half remaining in regulation and the Coyotes change it up. Hamuse. Sestito in over the line. Shot goes wide. And Bodker will move it along to center for Doan. Play back in. Here's Bodker. Bodker right to the net. He shoots and a save and a rebound. Oh, it's right there. But neither Doan nor Vermette can get it past Eddie Lack. Oh, well, the Coyotes are doing everything they can to get one past Lack. Another great effort there. That one almost went off Tanev and in the back of the net. Sestito steered away by Smith up into the netting and will step out. one nothing Coyotes late. Antoine Vermette, his goal at 17.04. The opening period is 22nd of the season. The difference to this point. Sixth goal in the season series for the Coyotes against Vancouver. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Whatever it takes to get the job done here tonight. That's the message on the bench right now. Alpert against Kessler on this critical faceoff inside the Coyote zone. And Stone now into the corner. He'll put the play along. Some boys there, but the Coyotes can't get it out. Board battle ensuing. Stone after it. Halpern after it. And this one off netting, so we'll redo it to the right of goaltender Mike Smith. 
And we heard from a lot of Coyotes yesterday and today. They were in a real good position. But then they just made little mistakes that ended up putting them back on their heels. They haven't done that here tonight. Maybe two or three real good shifts by the Vancouver Canucks. Otherwise, it has been all Coyotes. Four battles. Real suffocating style of defense that we're so used to seeing. Antoine Vermette against Hendrick Sedin. Again, no Daniel Sedin, who was injured in the Heritage Classic over the weekend against Ottawa. The Exa sends one in. Smith now behind the net, plays it off high. The Exa has it. He shoots. That was blocked in front. The Exa now plays it in behind the net. Bouncing oh, it's puck on the net. Top. Oh, wow. And we get a whistle here. Oh, Came off puck. the glass and right to the top, right? Yeah, right on top of the net. That almost rolled off the top of the net. Right down the back of Mike Smith and into the net. Watch this. Onto the net. Boom, boom, boom. And right out into the blue paint. Quick whistle there by the referee. Oh, that was... Who was that? Hanson? Uh, Zach Dalby. Oh, Dalby that... Gets that puck off the top of the net. So, puck comes out to the neutral zone. Romet will take the draw against Kessler. Romet Bob Cardone out there. Michael Stone and Keith Yandel. Over the line, Bobker has room. Rister wide. Yannick Hansen now. Gets it to center for Hamuse. Higgins. Our shot goes wide and high, and we'll get another whistle. Yeah, off the foot of the Coyotes defenseman and out of play. And Dave Tippett is going to put now the players he believes in defensively that can get the job done. The responsible, play it safe type guys. Alpern's going to come out to take this face off. McMillan out there as well. Shows you what he thinks of his game here tonight. Always a telltale sign. Halpern swatting away at it. Yandel's going to try to take it in behind. And that good work. Cassian by the uh, Canucks. Clear to the corner. And now Edler works it in behind. And Cassian goes after it. Watch there by Stone. And right through the crease that time. Stone goes after it. Cassian. And now Halpern challenging him in the far corner before Sestito will take it. Good work here by this line. Sestito, Sestito Cassian, and Schrader. And now McMillan will get it out. Try to get it deep. Moss is there. The exit intercepts. 220. Remaining in the third. Mike Smith can't clear it. Edler at the line for Bieksa. Oh, a shot taken that time goes wide. Rolling puck to the side. And now back out high. All Vancouver right now as this one is sent in. Blocked away by Ekman Larson. And the Coyotes will chip it out back to center. In over the line. Korpakowski is trying to drag it in the corner. That by design as the Coyotes get a change. Uh, they're just looking to eat clock right now. A puck in deep, make Vancouver come 200 feet. Now Ribeiro shifts it in behind the net. Dome locks it up. Keep a high guy. Antoine Vermette is that guy. Perfect positioning. Great job, Vermette, as he works at the dome. Across now, Bacher in front. He rolls right to Lack, and he's going to hold on. Another opportunity to shoot that puck. Mikel Bonker got a little bit cute. Tried to hit Antoine Vermette in front of the net. I still like it, though, that you still got to make plays. You can't completely turn your brain off. There's the, the chance there. Edler, a good stick. You throw that on net, you still have a chance because if there's a rebound, Antoine Vermette is right there. Unless you take the guessing out of it. Timeout, Vancouver, I believe. Yeah, so that'll give Dome, Bacher, and Vermette a well-deserved rest, not to mention the defenseman, but 
And not to mention the faceoffs in the Vancouver Canucks zone. So, so Vermette will stay out. You would think you, yeah. you would think that line will just stay out. Yeah, you win this faceoff, and that's huge. You you get control of that puck, put it in deep. He kill a, a good 15, 20 seconds off the clock. So here we go. Take a breather. No panic. Just get it done. We talked about it. The key to this hockey game. One key. Start to finish. Have we seen it? 15 will tell you. Antoine Vermette's face-off numbers outstanding. Ten wins, only six losses. He'll take the draw. Don and Bob for flanking him. Henrik Sedin for the Canucks. And Vancouver wins it. Oh, Flip right back in. Could be an icing call. No, they wave it off. Rightfully so. Canucks hustle back. Empty net down to our right. Vancouver with the extra attacker. And a shot sails wide. Into the corner now. And flipped out of there by Vermette. Under a minute to go in the third. And now it'll be played behind the net as Garrison will look to set it up for Vancouver. The exit now. On left wing, Higgins gets one in, steered away by Smith. Then this one off netting, and we'll get a face off. Uh, I'm not sure Mike Smith wanted to deflect that that high. Goaltenders can control that puck. Just got away from him a little bit. That goes up and into the net it, netting. Excuse me. So that's going to be a face off in zone. There's the shot. He just kind of deflects that up with his stick. A little help from his left leg as well. Big face off here. Alpert on the draw against Henrik Sedin. Empty net down to our right. Vancouver with the extra attack. Booth with a shot. Goes wide. Ekman Larson looks up ice. Flips it there. Moss got it out. Delayed call. And the faceoff will come out. Oof, that was Vancouver close. offside. Yeah, very close. That was close. Nice job by Jeff Halpern off that faceoff, though. He loses it. Drops. Blocks another one. Goes behind the net and nice little flip play there by Oliver Eckman Larson. Good hands by Oliver Eckman Larson. Alpern out there for the faceoff. Chase Shares now having words with Jeff Halpern. He's one of our linesmen here tonight. The other one being Lonnie Cameron. And the puck is going to go all the way back inside the Vancouver zone. Garrison now to play it in behind the net. Moss intercepts, looks to get one towards the net, and that's broken up. 18 seconds to go in Garrison circles. Through center ice, Higgins in over the line. Set wide of the mark. After it is Brandon McMillan. They can't keep it. It goes all the way up the ice. BX is going to go after it. Five seconds to go. Flipped along. Mike Smith makes the save, and he sends one down the length, and that's it. Coyotes in. And third overall this season. And the Coyotes get a huge two points here tonight, Tyson. Well, we talked about it. Start to finish. Could they do it? Could they close it out? I'll tell you what. You have a game like you did the other night against the Blues. That's tough to swallow. But you come right back against the Vancouver Canucks. It's all about redemption. The Coyotes found a lot about themselves here tonight. That's a huge two points. What? night and what a bounce back on the night in which they acquire Martin Erat from the Washington Capitals. one nothing Coyotes. Tonight's coverage continues in just a moment with Jody Jackson, Tyson Nash, Todd Walsh, and myself. It's Coyotes Live presented by CenturyLink and it starts right now.